tutorial, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to um, add clouds or render clouds in Photoshop. Um, so you're going to choose an image. Um, you can either choose it your own image. Um, I got this image off of Unsplash, but obviously you would want to start with a cloudless sky. Um, and then uh, a good way to work non-destructively is to make a duplicate of your image just as a good habit, um, you can do this a number of ways. You can hit Command J. Um, you can drag your layer down to the plus sign down here, which is a new layer. You can right click on your layer and say duplicate layer. You can go up to the fly down menu and say duplicate layer. Or you can go up to where it says layer and choose um, duplicate layer. So there's a lot of different ways that you can duplicate your layer, but this is just in case we end up working destructively on that layer. Um, so I'm going to rename this original image, um, and I'm going to keep it locked. Um, so I'm going to hit this little padlock here, and I'm going to hide it. This one, I'm going to just say cloudless sky so that I know what layer that is. Um, I'm renaming the layer by double clicking on the text. Um, of that layer and then just typing whatever it is I want to call that layer. Um, so when we render clouds it's actually a filter. Um, anytime we kind of render anything we want to put it on its own layer so that we can treat it like it's its own thing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. Um, we will put on here clouds so that we know that that's the layer that we're going to create our clouds on. You want to make sure that that particular layer is selected. So in this case, it's highlighted in blue. Um, yours might be highlighted in gray, depending on what interface you have um, selected. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Filter. And you're going to go down to where it says Render. And you're going to choose Clouds. Um, what this is going to do, I actually forgot something. You have to make sure that your colors are on the default colors. So if you press the letter D on your keyboard, um, that's going to give you those default colors. It's going to make sure that your clouds are just black and white. Um, now you'll notice that our clouds here are pretty tiny. Um, they, you might want them to be larger. Um, you can also go to filter clouds and you can kind of um, select that clouds um, filter over and over again. So you can kind of re-render the clouds to kind of look maybe the way that you want them to look. So every time it renders it, it renders them in a different way. Um, if you do that while holding down the Option key or the Alt key, um, it's going to make the black more intense and the white more intense. So if you're looking to create like fluffier um, clouds that have uh, a little bit more intensity with the white, then you're going to want to hold down that Option key. If you don't want to create um, more intense fluffy clouds, um, you don't need to press that option key. So um, you can, you know, choose what you, what you kind of type of cloud you're looking to create um, based on that. Now we want to make these clouds a little bit bigger. So because these clouds are on their own layer, we can transform them just like you can any other layer. So in order to make something larger or smaller, you would go to edit and transform and scale. Um, you can also use the free transform option, which is command T. This is going to give us a bounding box. Um, we're not really worried about maintaining proportions here. Um, however, if you click and drag, you will just maintain the proportions um, that are available to you. You can also, if you have that free transform selected, um, so I'm going to just select that free transform. You can also rotate your clouds. So if you feel like maybe your clouds should go a different direction, um, you can even rotate them and see. Um, so maybe they'll go this way. And I can also stretch them a little bit um, so that um, instead of maintaining those proportions, if I hold down shift and drag, it's going to shift um, the proportions of that cloud so I can get them to be a little bit longer. Once I'm happy with the clouds, and again, I can always shift 
this later. I can, I'm working non-destructively, so um, I can always make changes to these clouds later. I'm going to hit the checkbox or I'm going to double click in order to apply that transformation. And once it's applied, um, obviously I want to get rid of that black color um, because I don't, I want my clouds to just be white. I don't want to have any black in it. So what we're going to do to do that is change the blending mode. So again, make sure that you have your clouds layer selected. The blending mode is up here on the layers panel where it says normal. You're going to click and you're going to go down to where it says screen. What this does is screen is going to get rid of all the black in um, your image. So even the gray will kind of become a little bit slightly transparent. So another thing that we can do to adjust our clouds is we can um, use a levels layer, um, adjustment layer applied just to the clouds. And that way we can apply a little bit more contrast between your darks and your lights. So we're going to do that here. You're going to just go to the adjustments layer um, down at the bottom here and you're going to choose levels. And then um, right now this is going to create a levels adjustment layer above the clouds adjustment layer. If you're not really sure about adjustment layers, you can look at some of my other videos that talk about adjustment layers. Um, and in your properties panel, um, you're going to have these sliders with a histogram here. The top sliders, um, you can slide your black a little bit to the right, and that's going to make your clouds um, a little bit less dense. Um, you can also mess around with the gray slider in the middle, and the more I make it to the right, the more those clouds are going to be kind of like puffier, I guess and then the more to the left, the more dense they're going to be. So um, you can kind of decide what kind of clouds you're looking to have um, in your image. And obviously, like depending on what kind of look you're trying to achieve, that's going to change the way that your clouds, what decisions you make as far as um, creating those clouds. So um, right now, this levels is being applied not just to my clouds, but also to my image. I just want it to be applied to my clouds. So in my properties panel down here at the bottom, there's a little square with an arrow with a kind of line through it. If I click on that, what it's going to do is it's going to link my adjustment layer directly to the layer below it. So in that case, that's the clouds. So you can see here that um, now my adjustments are only applied to my clouds. The nice thing about using this level adjustment layers is that again we're working non-destructively. So if I, after I apply it just to my clouds, I think, oh no, like I, I don't want those to be as thin as they are. Um, I can make adjustments to it after the fact and kind of get it to look exactly the way that I want. Okay, we're gonna turn off our clouds layer for a second because what we want to do is we don't want the clouds to be over top of the mountains like this. So I'm gonna. Um, go to my cloudless sky layer, make sure I'm selected on that, and I'm going to select the sky. I'm going to use the um, magic wand tool because the sky is um, pretty solid color, um, and if it's truly cloudless, it shouldn't be that difficult to use this tool to um, select it. There are lots of different selection tools. You can choose whatever selection tool works best for your image. Um, in this case, the magic wand just works best for this. So now I'm going to turn that clouds layer back on. I'm going to make sure that I'm selected on the cloud layer. And because I have the sky selected, I'm going to create a layer mask. So um, down here at the bottom of the layers panel, there is a rectangle with a circle on it that kind of looks like a Japanese flag. You're going to click on that. What that's going to do is it's going to create a mask. So it's going to mask out all of the mountain range here and just have the clouds be in the sky. So now when I turn off and on this clouds layer, um, it makes it look as though there are clouds in the sky. If I want to make any further adjustments, like let's say I wanted to um, adjust the levels, or maybe I wanted to um, even adjust how big those clouds are, um, I can still do that. So I can select on my cloud layer, I can hit Command T, um, I might need to zoom out a little bit to make sure that I can see the total bounding box. So my clouds are already pretty large. 
and then um, I'm going to just make those a little bit bigger. Now you might notice that um, my mask is also resizing with my clouds. So I'm going to go back real quick and I'm going to unlink my mask from my clouds. So I'm just going to click on this little link um, here. I'm going to make sure that my clouds are selected. I'm going to hit Command T. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. And then I'm going to relink it so that um, I'm double clicking to apply the transformation. And then I'm going to relink my mask um, to my um, clouds so that um, just in case I make any adjustments to it later, um, that'll be linked up again. Okay, and that's basically it. Super easy, um, super realistic. If you find that there are any other changes that you um, want to make, you can still make them until it's exactly the way that you want it to look. And that's basically it.